Okay. Okay, we're recording now. Let's uh, go to, and uh, there we go. If we're on, uh, yeah, we're on Facebook. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> As I clear my throat here for a second, uh, trying to clear my throat. And let me, uh, I want to just do a few things here. This is just so that I can uh, can put myself at ease. There we go. Okay, just want to look good there. All righty. Hey, everybody. So it's uh, another of our pop-up shows, and we have a whole bunch of people getting ready to come on. Uh, they uh, they all start uh, lining up here, and we'll let the ones in right now that are already uh, here. Okay, here they go. First of all, we got Marjorie Miller, and then we got Charlene over there in her iPad. Mandy O'Brien uh, is coming through. Lens here. Oh, Charlie Wallace. Uh, there's Mandy. Okay. We're, uh, are y'all there? I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Just want to make sure everybody was there. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, Charlene's using a new camera today, right? You're using yes. your iPad. I'm using my iPad, but I got a new one on Saturday or last Saturday. I got a brand new one. So yep. they have great cameras now. In those. Yeah. It's much better than the other one I had. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Marjorie has the same one you have. Look at how good her camera looks. I, I look better today, too, because I have makeup on. I don't normally have makeup on. <laughs> well, you know what you can do? There is a blur that you can put on your face. <laughs> it looks like a little blur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Marjorie always insists that I put the blur on any camera that I'm using with her. So absolutely. What you're, what you're absolutely. Seeing, <laughs> If you think she looks terrible now, you should see what she normally looks like. <laughs> I've seen her in person. She's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. There and, you go. And, and me. And me. Uh, uh, <laughs> you didn't use the blur. <laughs> well, I use the blur on my face. So I, you know, I've got to. Uh, and hello to, um, of, of course, we have to say hello to our uh, old friend, uh, Edward Berger. Hi, Edward. That's right. And the reason why we do that is because he won't talk for the rest of the hour. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's, only that's one, the only thing you'll hear. <laughs> he only has one function on this show, and that's to say. <laughs> that's all, folks. That's at the end of the show. You yeah. can't do that yet. Otherwise, but... no one would know the it's the end of the show, and then the, the economy would just collapse. Everyone would just be watching. You know, you, you, you'd think that Edward was doing that voice, okay? But that is your natural speaking voice. That's right. <laughs> customer service people must have a field day with you. Uh -huh. What people? Like customer service type people when he calls us. They, they probably don't believe it. They probably feel it's a prankster. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And hello to Mandy, who is hard at work in her office. She was contemplating something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, good to see you. And uh, it's always good to see uh, um, Paula, of course. Oh, oh, what's her name? Yeah. I, I, I came in a little bit late. Where's the blur? How do you do that? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. You, you go up to it's you see it. that you buy. It's called the Elizabeth Taylor filter. No, it's not even called that. And it was the Lucille Ball filter. <laughs> Yes, it was. They did a series with her. The last series yeah. they did with her, there was this blur over her face as she'd walk across a room. Yeah. You remember that, Edward? I, I heard that. They, she had, uh, they had to put something over the camera. No. Yeah, yeah. Like lots of Vaseline. More yeah, than, yeah. More than you'd use for sex. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but no, but is she, um, 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 uh, so the, yeah, yeah. So, uh, let me see here. You go up, you see up, up at the very top of your, of your, um, uh, and I don't know if this is true on iPads, but there is a, uh, there's kind of a shield, a green shield at the top of your, at the top of your screen. Uh -huh. in there? No. Oh, well. well it's an, I'm yeah. a, it's an, oh, a green shield. Nah. Yeah. Ooh, I have, I have that this. Mark in it? Yeah. I have this new computer and I love it, but uh, 
it's the 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 the, um, the camera is way too accurate. <laughs> you, mean the, you like the older cameras, right? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all the new cameras that come with computers are really exquisite. I mean, and they and they're probably the cheapest cameras around because they're built into you know iPads and iPods and uh, i things like that. You know, um, uh, uh, Jeff always looks the same though, no matter what. Jeff always looks the same. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Well, he doesn't have his mic on. <laughs> hey, Scott Boddicker, I just noticed you were there. <laughs> yes, I am here. What compels you to call today? I just wanted to see if Mandy was going to be on. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. You know, um, um, you know, I um, it's uh, it's uh, yeah, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty, uh, pretty nice that you're all here. So good. Uh, it's uh, Monday, and uh, did any of you have an unusual weekend at all? Anything happen over the weekend that? Yes, yes, Scott. What did you? You stayed sober? <laughs> no, I did not. Oh, yeah. a a actually, uh, my middle daughter got engaged. Whoa! Your, your middle daughter got engaged. Yes, my. Now, how many other daughters do you have that are married? One. One, so this will be two that are married. Eventually, yes. Eventually. Yep. You have to pay for the wedding again, right? She's got more money than I got. So. Oh, okay. Well, I'll let her pay the goddamn <laughs> that, that is That's the modern story. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> also, the question is, in this day and age, who gets married? You know, a lot of people just don't get married. Right. They, they, They've been living together for seven years. So see, see, see. There you go. It's, what's the big deal, right? Yeah. We were living together for how long, Marjorie, before we got married? We met in two thousand four, and we were married. We got in two married in eleven or twelve. Okay. Well, what do you mean eleven or twelve? <laughs> you know, I you know, guys always rely on the woman in their life to know how long they've been married. Delivery. I have to. Oh, you have a delivery? Yeah, she's going to check. She's going she to check the baby. Date. <laughs> yeah. I think we were. I think we were married in 2010. If I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong. Actually, I could go to my pictures of our wedding and yeah. add that to it. Oh, here comes Andrew Deutsch. Boy, we're going to have quite a full house today. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Andrew. How are you? Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't have a background on. Mm. Uh, he's just in a, a plain white room. Yeah, and no straight jacket. And no straight <laughs> jacket either. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, so you, 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 they got engaged seven years together before they got married. But they, they, well, they're not married yet. Before, yeah. before they decided to get yeah. engaged, <laughs> what took them this long? Did they just feel like a lot of other people like? Why do it? That's what his mother wants to know. So, what took him so long? What took him? Oh, did he ask her to get married? Finally, yes, yes. He's supposed She's been to pressuring her. him for like years. So. Did he do the old-fashioned thing and call you first and see if it was all right with you? No. <laughs> uh, did he get down on his hands and knees and hand her the ring? I think he did. Yes. Oh, okay. Well, wow. at least he's part of the tradition going. But actually, aren't you supposed to ask the father of the bride if it's okay with him? You're, you're talking out of the last century is what he's talking yeah, about. That. I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, my, my son in law asked my husband. Here comes, here comes Mandy's favorite person on the panel. <laughs> here he comes. Wait a minute. Where is he? There he is. Brian Neary, ladies and gentlemen. And Mandy was just saying how happy she was that you're here. <laughs> she went to bed or something? I don't know. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Guys. Hmm? You guys are so fun. Yeah, <laughs> my, my other woman's coming in right now, so don't get her. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Let me see this whistle. Oh, hey, drop the cat before the cat jumps on me and claws me to thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Say what? hi, everybody. Oh, there, 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 there she is. Get up. Get up. Now she's playing shy. Come on. You know, I want to bring something up oh. as, as long as she's here because I want to make her feel good. When you went down to, uh, where was it you went down to, to for some kind of dancing competition for her? Adrian. Yeah. yeah. He's talking yeah. to you. Where did you go? He's talking to you. Oh, well, I, I, well, I'm talking to you too, Brian. Where did you go? We went to San Diego. San Diego. And how did her dance group do? They did great. What do you mean they did great? Did they win? They did great. You know, what I, what, here's what I wanted to say, because I you told me that they didn't win. Okay. They, uh, and my feeling know, is in 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 art and in performance and things like everybody's that. Everybody's a winner. There should be no competition. I don't believe in com I don't like the Academy Awards for that very reason, you know. I mean yeah. Yeah, but they you know, there there are some sports that they sort of stack things and they don't look for birth certificates and you know, Charlie's Charlie's empiring, you know, a 10 and 12 year old there's a kid who looks like he's 18 up there, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's how it was with them. They use like age averages and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so they have all these older kids and a few youngers. It's a, it's a mess. So yeah. you know, they did really yeah. good. They, but, but I'm just saying to her that in the future, when anybody puts you in a competition for dancing or anything like that, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose. It's whether you think you are good and whether you were doing good? the best you could do. Are you good? Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they were really good. Actually, when... When we saw them perform, we could tell they were even more loose and more smiling and more comfortable out there, no matter what. And yeah. then even their their big performance, they have 42 kids out there. They do a Marvel scene with a couple different songs in it. Really, really mm -hmm. good. And there were like people all around us, like clapping and people from other dance teams and all this stuff. And then they got they got scored a low score, like really low, like one of the lowest. And everybody's like in shock. So it's like, you know what? Okay. Then we get a sportsmanship award at the end. So yeah, I but, told everybody it yeah. was good sportsmanship because we we allowed them to give us that low score. Yeah, well, the only thing that bothers me about competition in the arts, okay, and this is one of the arts, is that there is no real competition in the arts. I mean, you know, it's acceptance by other people and how they liked what you did. And it's it, it, it she should never feel that she's won or lost ever. But the fact that she just danced was enough. Yeah. You know? And they got accepted to the Nationals. And she got a scholarship this year from them. So it's good. She got a scholarship. <laughs> what? She's in the going to be in the second grade this year. What's she getting a scholarship to? Second grade? No. Uh, she a uh, single convention scholarship. So, yeah, so she got a scholarship. So, wow. yeah, so they, it was it was a shock to us, too. They just they said, oh, we're going to get, you know, they have scholarships for the kids. Mm -hmm. And I just happened to have my phone out. Just to mm -hmm. see if anyone in the group won and the first name was her. So it was really good. Oh, wow. oh that's wonderful. No, it's terrific. That's terrific. Anyway. Yeah, and then they just gave us a new the new classes for next year, and she's advanced to the next the next levels for all her classes. So it's really good. And how are your kids, Mandy? Okay. Yeah. Cool. How's your daughter doing in New York City? She's doing great. She's been uh going outside of New York some like she was in Connecticut this weekend and uh she's been to the Hamptons I told y'all y'all she went to Belmont the Belmont Lakes and stuff like that oh, so really she, so she's really enjoying herself did you oh, yeah. tell her to find some guy living in the Hamptons <laughs> well, I think her roommate her roommate's got connections somehow but um I think I told you guys I think I'm going to try to come up there in August to visit so I'm going to try to visit you guys well, okay. we'll, we'll be here if I'm still alive. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> alive until the end of August. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, I will try to keep above room temperature till August. <laughs> yeah, because tomorrow I, I have to go get my, my lungs radiated or P CT scan on them. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. yeah. Ay, ay, ay. No, a, doc a doctor just doesn't want to take any chances. So. Well, the problem with Alex, though, he goes into the computer and he looks up what if, what can, what will be, and all of a sudden he's got cancer of this and cancer of that, and his days are numbered, okay? 
Well, but it's true. And every day we're on limited time. No, I, what happened was the last year when I went to the hospital, they did a CT scan of my chest and they found a lung nodule that I have had for eight years. Okay, oh. so that that's not a problem. Uh, if you had it for two years and it hasn't grown, it's not a problem. And the other was a thing, and I can't even pronounce it, and it's it's a nodule that is never, ever cancerous. So why he's having me do this test, I guess it's just because he doesn't want to get sued if I suddenly come down with cancer. And why do you keep looking in the computer under all these things to see what, what to, you have? To calm myself down, do you realize how horrible <laughs> I'd be to live with if I didn't? I'm, I'm living with it already. <laughs> Actually, I talked to my doctor, our, our, our primary physician, and I said, you know, I, I do look a lot of this stuff up on the web. And he says, good. That's a lot good. of it? That gives you a good medical education. He, he approved of it. Yeah, but he doesn't know how compulsive you are. <laughs> he should know. He's my doctor. <clears throat> you don't complain. You don't go see him all the time. Part of that CT scan they did last year on it, it said compulsive behavior. <laughs> no shit. <laughs> <laughs> I did find out I have mild emphysema. Oh, here we oh. go. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. Probably from all that dust. What? Probably from all that dust from them pointing the uh, building. Oh, yeah, uh, all the windows that, 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 listen, I am sure that there can't, it can't be good. Mm. All that dust that was being put up in this building. They're not doing our building anymore, are they? They're kind of through. They're working on the roof. They're working on the roof. Are they working on the roof? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's, they could take down the uh, the homeless shelter around the They're building. Not until, until it passes inspection. Oh, okay. So it has to pass <laughs> inspection? Yeah, because if they took all this scaffolding down and it didn't, they'd have to put it back up. Well, so I just I just mm -hmm. be glad when it's gone because it just makes this build it doesn't show you the full glory of this building, you know. Most a lot of buildings in New mm -hmm. York right now have those what I, I call them homeless shelters because whenever they put them up, poor people decide they can live under them. Well, it's wherever mm -hmm. they're doing work. Yeah, yeah. Not that I, I want to denigrate the homeless, but let them go somewhere else. That's my attitude. Anyway, but I've been helping the homeless, by the way, haven't I? Haven't I told them? My underpants came today. Them. I buy all my socks and underpants and things like that from, uh, from uh, what is it, Bombas? Bombas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Bomba, if you buy a pair of socks from them, contribute a pair of socks to the homeless. And if you buy a pair of underpants, they send you... Uh, they send a pair of underpants to the homeless. So that, that's a, a very, a very nice cause. I, I, go, nice. I go along with that. It doesn't, yeah, I agree. It doesn't bother me at all. Anyway. So let's see here. Anything happening uh, in the news that we can talk about that won't get anybody upset? <laughs> we could talk about the weather. That wouldn't get anybody upset. Well, oh, the weather. <laughs> right. By the way, Forget it. There is no global warming. This proves it once and for all that there's no global warming. Just a little, just a little rain. It is going to go up in Phoenix, Arizona. What did we see today? 120 degrees. Yeah. Tomorrow uh, it'll be 120. Who wants to live in Phoenix, Arizona? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was 68 degrees here yesterday. By Saturday, they're saying 104. Oh. <laughs> and you're and you're where? Uh, east of San Francisco, about fifty miles, and yeah, and that's uh, that's on the other side of the uh, the pass there, right? Yeah, we're on the East Bay. East Bay, yeah. You always get hot there, but that's really hot. That's hot. <laughs> you know, we've had the air conditioners on in both rooms for what the last two last week, two weeks, yeah, like yeah. That. week at least. You know, it's been terrible. The heat's been horrible. How is it doing in uh, where you live, uh, uh, Paula? Yeah. Actually, it's been very nice. I, uh, <clears throat> Ohio was boring, but you know we don't have floods, <laughs> and we don't have we don't have like extreme heat. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what, yeah. what 
it's been very nice today at least yeah yeah how hot is it down where you are uh uh mandy it's uh like you know 89 88 you 80, know 89 that's what the humidity you? though right well it's the humidity <laughs> it's the humidity um and then we, we've been having a lot of rain it's been very rainy mm -hmm. um but i noticed when i was in pittsburgh last week it was totally different there you know mm -hmm. everybody on facebook was talking about how hot how brutal it was here and it was like 76 there so that was kind of nice yeah, yeah. And okay, yeah, uh, and I, yeah, is it hotter out where you are, um, 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 Edward? It says it's eighty-two. It's eighty-two. It's exactly what it is here. Yeah. Eighty-two. Yeah. Yeah. And you're, you're where? You're out on the island? No, I'm in Flushing. Oh, you're in Flushing. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flushing, Flushing has become a very Chinese community, hasn't That's it? That's right. And so you now call it Flushing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, I, I love this. Is this one market you got there where you can buy a whole big tortoise? Uh, that you, I don't know. Yeah, you can buy a turtle. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, somewhere. I don't know where. Remember, we saw that, didn't we, Marjorie? Yeah, we were... it was in one of the little markets when we had lunch. Little with... market. This was a huge market. Yeah, but we had lunch in there, remember? Not in there. We went to another place. Near it. But but this place literally was selling turtles. Yeah. So I'm I is turtle yummy. I've never eaten turtle. It's like it, chicken. Oh, <laughs> it is it is good. It like chicken. Does it taste like chicken? Yes. No. No. Yeah. Okay. It tastes more like gator. Because they always say, <laughs> oh, it tastes like chicken, tastes like chicken. Well, if it tastes like goddamn chicken, why aren't you eating chicken? <laughs> It's cheap because huh? chickens don't taste like turtles. <laughs> well, anyway, they always say it always tastes like chicken. They never taste like chicken, and I don't care. Like rattlesnake, they used to. They had actually on one uh, place I went into, they were actually serving rattlesnake. Rattlesnake chili. And I said, "What does it taste like?" And they said, "Tastes like chicken." Then why not just eat chicken? It tastes. It tastes more like a halfway between a chicken and a fish. Really? That's a, yeah, that's the texture of a fish. You've eaten that crap? Mm-hmm. Really? Why? Because I've been all over the world for work and been served all sorts of shit over the years. What's the weirdest thing you've ever been served and that you actually digested? I can <laughs> tell you ones I didn't like. Um, I don't know, probably kudu steaks in in, um, in Africa. It's a type nope. of a deer. Kudu. Okay. Okay. They're really good. That's kind of like venison here, right? Uh, it's a little, it's a little different taste. The worst, the worst was I was in Korea and this was a thirty-two course meal, and the guy brought out. He says, "Try this," and I tried it. And you know, you don't want to insult the food, but it was kind of chewy and nasty. And he said, "Well, what did you think?" I said, "Oh, it's fine." He goes, "Oh, that's weird. I didn't think Americans like dogs." And, oh! I, and I got up and oh! I, I got up and left the table. Oh. Oh. He wasn't kidding, right? No, no. <laughs> knowingly i wouldn't have eaten it but he was a jerk oh uh, wow yeah wow but well, I, had, I don't think i could do that well I, I wouldn't have you know of course not yeah but do they serve a, cat over there too i assume so sweet and sour sylvester yeah oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> tarts stop it mm -hmm. Yeah. In in the Middle East, they had these birds that that eat when the dates become uh, the dates and figs come ripe. These birds, I know what they do. I know, that, they do. and then they fry them whole and serve them to you. The bird full of right, full of fig and right, bacon. right. I, there are several birds like that. Yeah, I had that in Lebanon. Really? Yeah. Now is that be, now I the worst that I ever did? Okay, was that I was in the at the Olympics in Littlehammer. And right mm -hmm. next door to where we did, where the studio was, there was this, uh, there was this hamburger place. So we would go and get hamburgers, and they were so delicious. I pick up two or three of them. Reindeer. Yeah. Yeah. It's not to be reindeer. I said, "Boy, this is great. This is the best hamburgers I've ever had." What? What is it exactly? And they said, "Reindeer." <laughs> yeah, I thought I had an allergy to it because I ate it once and got a red <clears> nose. 
Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I knew we were I was waiting. I, I was, I was, the jokes were spinning in my head at the moment about, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, set up another one for me, please. <laughs> yeah. Another ball on the tee. Yeah. Well, I said to them, who's going to pull the sleigh? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be here all week. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. And all the crazy things in, in Brazil, I ate uh, capivara, that huge swamp animal. Had all sorts of odd oddities over the years. A swamp animal? It's called a capivara. It's it's like a, imagine just a massive rabbit that mm -hmm. lives in this in the swamp. Yeah. You know, yeah. I always could. felt that up until up until reindeer, I thought the weirdest thing I had ever eaten was like snail, you know, escargot. And uh I got to actually like escargot, although I finally determined that. Escargot really doesn't have any taste. It's the garlic they cook it in. Garlic, of the garlic butter. and butter. Yeah. 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 But that if you just had to eat the snail, it probably didn't taste like much of anything. It's just that you can now eat it and then say, guess what I just ate? Yep. You know, it's brass bites. One of the funniest ones, I was in, in China. And my at that time, my Mandarin was pretty mm -hmm. weak. So I would just go into a restaurant and point at things. And whatever they brought me, I would eat. And on the appetizer list, I picked something and they brought out, it was these little bones that look like this. There's a little tiny piece of meat at the end of it, about this big. And I, I ate it. It was good. But I kept the bones in my pocket because I wanted to know what it was. I went back to the hotel and showed it to the, the woman who could speak English at the desk. And she said, oh, that's my favorite, my favorite. I said, what is it? Oh, it's a duck tongue. So it was oh. the jawbone of the duck holding the tongue. And you just oh. you, you peel the, the meat yeah. out. <laughs> well, I imagine I imagine that would be a very meaty part. Yeah, yeah. But you know, walking walking in the streets of China with a duck tongue in your mm. pocket is. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we uh, when we were in China, um, what am I? I'm frozen. Yeah, we can yeah. still hear you. Am I? Fr I'm frozen. I, I suddenly yeah. I. I your audio's have, working. We can hear you. Yeah, but I'm wondering why I'm frozen. That's uh, let me let me turn, turn myself turn off. Turn the thermostat down. Let me turn me <laughs> off. Uh, let me see. Stop video. Okay. I'll stop my video. Okay. There we go. Now I'll turn my video Ready? back on and let's see if I'm there. We go. I fixed it. Hey, I do. I was, let's hear it for me, folks. Uh, anyway. That was a great play by play, Mr. Cosell. How long was I frozen? Do you know? A minute. Mm. Oh, okay. No big deal. Mm. So anyway, so uh, um, um, yeah, I, uh, I always, I always try to figure out how certain things were, you know, made that people decided to eat them, you know, mm -hmm. and and uh, the thing is, is I always figured something like snail people ate as bragging rights to a girl, <laughs> a woman. Well, hey, guess what I can eat? See that snail over there, yeah. right? Uh, and so I figured that that's how a lot of uh, uh, cuisine was invented on the bet, dare and the bet of a guy who wanted to impress his girlfriend. Yeah, so you're probably right. Yeah, yeah. I had squirrels once. Really? Yeah, but it was in Peru. Yeah. And they look quite different. They look pretty nice. No, it's a cui. You ate a guinea pig. You, you could be right. Yeah, it was, it's a delicacy in Peru. I've had it many times. It's called. This guy's eating the most disgusting food yes. in the world. <laughs> oh, I'm frozen again. How does that keep happening? Oh, that's what you get for insulting me, right? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I ate a uh, lamb's tongue one time. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was. And when I found out what it was, it came right back up. Really? <laughs> it was gross. Well, I like, I like, I always like beef tongue. Because my mother served it. And so, you know, things that your family served at a dinner table, you got used to and you were able to eat. And I always love tongue. When I go into, uh, you know, a, a, a delicatessen here in New York, I will order a tongue sandwich. It's a good yeah. way to shut up the cows, keep them quiet. That's right. That's right. I always like the tip of the tongue of the cow. <laughs> That's yeah. the best part. You go, the further back you get, the more gelatinous it gets. Yeah. Oh, I, was served, I, was served, I, hmm? I was served beef cheek in, um, I think it was in Budapest, and I thought it was kind of disgusting. Beef cheek is mm -hmm. supposed to be pretty good. It's supposed to be kind of... Beef cheek. I know. It's supposed to be the meatiest part of the of the cow. 
-hmm. and they uh -huh. get uh when when we go out they get um beef chicken they get ear the pig ear cut up who uh the kid uh stephanie and mommy really yeah it's gonna be Vietnamese, you know, they got all these weird part things. Vietnamese, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, you know, feijoada, the, the Brazilian famous food that they make, it was slave food. So it had all of the pieces nobody would eat snouts, ears, mm. everything cooked yep. in with the beans as a stew. And now it's a delicacy. Well, also, a lot of the parts of the animal that we don't normally eat, they used to eat because poor people was poor people's food. Yep. Yeah. And you may, and you, they found great dishes for it. I'll tell you. Marjorie will tell you this. What am I crazy for, Marjorie? That I actually make occasionally. Tongue. Never eaten. Tongue. Tripe. Tripe. I love beef tripe. Mm. Uh, and what it is, it's the inner lining of a cow's stomach. And you cut it into strips, and then you put it into a into a pot with a, 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 a kind of a, a, a tomato sauce. And you let it cook for about three hours, and then it, you take it out. It's, I think it's delicious, but you never would have any of it, right? By Mark? the way, I never ate it. Huh? Mel is horrible when it's cooking. Oh, Mel. my mother-in-law cooked that all the time. I'd have to turn around. My, mo and walk my mother out. made it. My mother made it all the yeah, time. That's absolutely. the reason I got to love it. Hey, if I didn't have tripe that night, I didn't eat dinner. You know? Yeah, we just got in a big argument last night. <laughs> Adrian's like being so picky. Well, I don't want to eat this. I don't want to eat that. And guess what? I said, you eat what we made or you're going to bed. So she went to bed. Really? Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Oh, good for oh, her. She stuck by her. They're on Frozen again. How's that happening? Hey, you're not paying profile, attention, though. Alex. What? You're not paying attention. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Well, I don't know what this is all about, damn it. Handle. I'll just I'll just keep myself off for a while. <clears throat> I'm, I'm, I'm on. I'm okay. Yeah, yeah that that's the you know, kids these days. They say, "Oh, I don't like this. I don't like that." I'm like, "What are you doing?" I never told my parents. Oh, I don't like that. I'm not going to eat dinner. It's like right. no, you eat what they make. It's like, and much. we couldn't we couldn't leave the table until we ate. Until yeah. We yeah. Well, I mean, uh, uh, I, I, I'm happy that she stuck by her guns and just left the table and went to her room. Yeah, uh, she well, didn't leave the table like you're thinking she left the table. <laughs> was she protesting? <laughs> no, she was protesting me, yelling at her, and no, it was not a good sight. Oh, well, you know. Not on TikTok, look good. Here's a guy, here's a guy. What age did you finally become a father? 48. 48. I know I look like I'm 30, but come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mandy is listening. I thought Mandy was busy at work, but now she's laughing. So, <laughs> yeah, that was 48. Mm -hmm. Let me see here. Alex, Where did Alex go? I know I'm, 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 I, I bring myself <laughs> back here and now I'm okay, but then I'll freeze up. Let me see if it has something to do with this camera. Make a weird, really weird face first. Well, I can try this camera here. You're frozen again. I, frozen. I know I'm frozen again, but that's, there, you go. there we go. Uh, I went to another camera here. I have a really funny story about kids with food. Like, I have a memory. We used to, like, be able to sit out on our back porch and eat, mm -hmm. me, my brother, and my sister. Yeah. And one night we were having cooked cabbage, and I didn't mm -hmm. like cooked cabbage. It's nasty. Mm -hmm. And my brother, who is older, he said, take your cooked cabbage and put it in the outside trash can over there. Mm. And I was, I was like six. I was like, okay, when I scraped my plate into the trash can, he promptly ran in and told on me. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to eat out of, I had to eat all the cooked cabbage that was still in the serving bowl and it was cold, you know, mm -hmm. it, I have trust issues. I have trust issues. <laughs> <laughs> At least they didn't make you eat the stuff that you just poured in the garbage. In the trash can. Exactly. That's what I thought you were going to say. Wow. I love cooked cabbage. I, I, I mean, it's literally like, I already didn't really like it, but other things I didn't like as a kid, I like now as an adult, but mm -hmm. I cannot, it's like I have a trauma bond or a trauma reference to cooked cabbage. I can't eat it. Wow. Wow. Anything they forced me to eat when I was a kid, I will not touch now. Yeah. yeah, like I said, mm -hmm. it's psychological. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I think there's a lot of things that we used to eat that we rarely have anymore. Mm -hmm. And you can't even remember, do I actually like it or I don't like it, but yeah. I don't want to eat it. That's for like, sure. Like what for you, Jeff? I don't know. Some of the stuff my mother used to make. I, I can't remember exactly. Was... Also, I think cooking's come a long way. Like I think my mom, she cooked a lot of vegetables that were frozen as opposed yeah. to just going and getting them fresh and and because mm -hmm. like I didn't like bro we didn't eat broccoli there was lots of things we didn't eat and she would make stuff out of the can or frozen so you know when I was cooking I'm like this is not bad like just season it and it's fine why did uh, I not like this but the same thing my mother did the exact same thing and it was horrible is, is there any food that you 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 suddenly were uh, uh you know uh, exposed to at a later years in your life, yeah, with me that, it was that you suddenly really got to like it. Yeah, with me it was broccoli. I was yeah. like 22, 24. Yeah, and my mother always had it was either in a can and it stunk like crazy. Mm -hmm. I was like thirty five when I had my first lobster. Wow! Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Mm. and and um, I remember it was out at. Um, uh, Jerry Wexler's home. Jerry Wexler was the head of Atlantic Records. And uh, my girlfriend at the time and his daughter were very good friends. So we went out there and I had never had lobster. And as soon as I had it, I want, I said, I want more of this. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. And part of the reason was you live in California. Uh, there's not a preponderance of lobster in California. It's mm -hmm. crab out there that we, you know, that we really were into. Uh, Dungeness crab, which is insanely mm -hmm. wonderful. But so when I came to New York, it was the first time I got exposed to lobster. Boy, lobster was sure worth it, man. It was mm -hmm. worth it. the best. Uh, I'm probably and, the only person on earth that doesn't like lobster. You don't? Why? <clears throat> I don't think it has much of a flavor. I'm not, I don't get it. I don't like it. No. I mean, I don't go out of my way to order it. No, me either. Yeah, but I mean, it, did you grow up with it at all? No, 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 no not I really. Didn't, I didn't either. But man, I liked it from the first time I tasted it. I said, "This is we, <clears throat> what we have here. What we order from from Stu Leonard's about oh. every couple of weeks, <laughs> lobster rolls." Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, Maybe so it's because good. I saw the little cute little lobsters in the Red Lobster. When yeah. We were <laughs> See, this is why I don't know why Mandy is single. Mandy, on your match.com, you need to put I don't like lobster. Guys will be attached to you like that. Oh, yes. <laughs> really? Guys would why would guys be attached to her if she said she doesn't like lobster? Because <laughs> they're expensive. I'd be a cheap day. <laughs> cheap day. <laughs> be a cheap day. Yeah. Hey, when you mentioned Jerry Wexler, it made me think <laughs> I watched the Wham documentary on Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you remember the part about Jerry Wexler producing Careless Whisper? And yeah, he didn't, always... and George Michael was like, this sucks. Like, it's yeah. not good at all. And he like did it himself and yeah. was a lot better. Like they played a demo of the one that Jerry Wexler produced. It was really, <laughs> and it was real, eh, you know. Yeah. yeah, you, yeah I, that was a good, that was a good uh, documentary. Yeah, I, I loved it. You expect to see more because, okay, the wham was done. Well, let's hear more about George Michael, but. Yeah, they really did stop at that point, and yeah, yeah it was, it was, really it was just about them, just those yeah, four yeah. years, which I can I I can believe it was only four years. I'd forgotten it was yeah. such a short time. I, I, funny, exactly I wasn't going to watch it, but you 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 got me to watch it, Mandy, after okay, my sarcastic yeah, comment. But, <laughs> but I I thought I saw the documentary advertised, but I never watched it because I didn't care about Wham. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's it, because it was the epitome. Like they were out when right was like sixteen to like twenty yeah. years old. Like I was, I loved the music. It was very catchy, so it brought back a lot of great memories. You know, and also just the fact that they, it was him and Andrew that were narrating, narrating yeah. it. Like there wasn't just some person talking; it was their voices, like yeah. some interviews they had done. I don't know how they did it. it, was, it was, I was just never crazy about Wham. Yeah. yeah, neither was I. But then, like Mandy says, you go back into that time and you remember those songs, a lot of songs, too. And then, like, yeah, I thought the exact same thing. I didn't realize it was such a short time. You know, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Andrew's mm -hmm. looking like he's important. Uh oh, mm -hmm. now he ditched us. <laughs> uh -huh. who, who who ditched us? Hey, hey, Andrew, Andrew, he picked up the phone like he's yeah, a yeah. guy. Oh, and then he, he just lost kind of his off. video. <laughs> Maybe his video started freezing. Why did my video start freezing? Oh well, I had this other camera, so we're fine. Oh no, there you I go. Marjorie. On the Ten other hours camera. and days gonna put it into that night show. What'd you say, Charlie? Said that your picture hasn't frozen yet on this other camera. No, so it's it's just something with the way that camera is currently working, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I'll I'll fix it after the show. Anyway, so uh, let me see here. I'm trying to think about, is there anything else that, uh, did we watch anything lately, Marjorie, that we enjoyed? No, but we're going to, tonight we're going to watch the documentary on the Oppenheimer thing. Are we? Yeah. Oh, why? Because I have to go into the movie. Why? Because I've seen every documentary ever made on Oppenheimer. Why do, I have to, why do I have to see another one? You don't have to. I'll watch it by myself. <laughs> did you see the movie? No, no, it's coming out in two weeks. Yeah, and right, right, right. Well, what I would, what I didn't realize about Oppenheimer, I mean, I know he was like the father of the atomic bomb and all that, but I, I didn't realize that he was. Uh, McCarthy went after him. Uh, him they all went after him. They, they tried to say he was a communist when he, I, he wasn't, or you know, he had fiddled with it when he was younger or something like that. But how dare you go after the guy who invented sudden death? Yeah, I mean, come he on. also found black holes and wrote papers about it years before it was discovered again. Wow, really? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, hmm. yeah well, Oppenheimer was, uh, you know, he, he, I don't know if I could live with being Oppenheimer with what I invented, although he kind of tried to stop people from using it after he. He, mm -hmm. you know, and he didn't invent it in that th these were, this was a, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Nuclear Physicist, <laughs> um, uh, Charlie, but he no, but he, uh, he was a, um, there were a lot of people involved a lot in the creation of the atomic bomb. You had the Manhattan Project here in Manhattan. Think of the think of that they actually think <laughs> the manhattan project is actually in manhattan and then what do they what do they do get do nuclear fission here <laughs> what do they do charlie in manhattan what was that project I, I like? the, the, I mean, the fission and stuff was worked on in oak ridge tennessee they didn't actually uh oh okay well then what was the manhattan project that was all part of it a lot of there was a lot of theoretical and, and mathematical calculations and stuff that were done all over the place the great story that I love is that they went to Einstein with the plans for the atom bomb. Correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie, with the, the plans for the atom bomb. And they said to him, does it work? Is it, would it work? And he looked at the plans and he said, yes, it'll work. And years later, somebody said to him, why, after you saw that they had this thing and you saw the plans for it, all you had to do was tell them it won't work and they wouldn't build it. That's not and true. He, said he didn't think anybody who would be that stupid to build that thing, you know, but he thought he was being asked an academic question. What is I also knew they were... that the Germans were working on it and he exactly. didn't get it first. Yeah. Exactly. And whoever got it was going to take over the world. I mean, you yeah. know, that, that, that was, it was, it's a moot question. About it didn't it turn out, though, that, that the, the uh, Germans weren't as close as we thought they were? Well, a lot of them emigrated here. Yeah. No, no, right. But what I'm saying no, is... No, they weren't as close as we thought. Yeah, but they were. They could have been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was our, what was, what was our advantage? I mean, they had great scientists. You know, we have people like Oppenheimer. Yeah, yeah, and and also, uh, yeah, and we we wanted to build the goddamn thing, you know. So anyway, we only had two of them though. That was yeah. did we have a third? Was there a third sitting around? No, there wasn't a third. The, so, they, so we didn't they know what to do. build a third if they had to, but no, they they only had two that were working. That were well, working. They blew up one in Los Angeles. They blew what? one up. 
They, to test it. Well, there was a third one that they blew up in the yeah. test in, in, in Los Alamos. Yeah. yeah. So they did have three. Yeah, but but the two that they had, they didn't have one more in case that didn't work. You know, that did end the war. Yeah. But it, it if it hadn't, they would we would have not had another one to put in there. Not right away. It would take Japanese away. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't know that. Do, do have we told them since? No. <laughs> They're still afraid. They obviously didn't get the memo. Yeah. A lot of people worked on the atomic bombs and have them on airplanes. And mm -hmm. so you can have them all over the world. I worked on one of them. But what was the basic difference in the, in the internal part of it that makes it more, I don't know, what do you want to call it? Powerful, but manageable. Is this is help. <laughs> well, I, I may be wrong, and again, Charlie, correct me if I'm wrong on this. An atom bomb worked on having two fissionable materials being exploded and sent towards each other, where they imploded. Am I right about that? Yeah. No, they they actually you, they exploded. They you bring enough, you get a, what they call a critical mass in a small enough area, mm -hmm. and then the neutrons that are normally just just uh, thrown out will be more likely to strike another nucleus and throw out more neutrons and then just a, it's a chain reaction where so do they have to use dynamite inside the bomb in order to get the two started the two two reasonable materials to collide with each other <laughs> no they just had to physically smash them together and then how did that happen oh that was just a, nuclear physicist that, that that was just a uh, I mean, just so like you bring anything together, you can use uh, what is it called, pneumatic force to bring it together. Just anything, just to bring them in physical proximity. Mm -hmm. But what did they use with the bomb? In other words, what was inside the bomb that made these two things come together? That was it. There was, was like a, a spring-loaded thing that just oh, okay. together. Right. together. That's what I wondered. Here's the other fact that I know about the atom bomb. When they blew it over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it was literally over Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It never landed on the ground. Right. That's, it wouldn't have been as effective if it had landed on the ground. That gave the most damage to the widest area was it exploded a mile or two above the ground. Yeah. Didn't know that. That. He probably thought it landed on the ground and exploded, but yeah, no, that's what landed. I always thought. Nope. Yeah, yeah. The okay. explosion happened on the way down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it a mile or two? I thought it was just like several hundred feet. No, I believe it was at least a mile above the surface. Yeah. Wow. Well, then how in in the uh, uh, tests in Los Alamos and so on? It was had, raised above the ground. It was. They had it in a tower. A tower. Yeah. Yeah, but that wasn't as fierce as if they had had double the tower. Probably not. It was fierce enough. They, they, they. Uh, a lot of people got radiation poisoning and stuff from that that they didn't expect because they didn't know how they didn't realize how big the explosion was going to be. The, it was a de lot worse than what they thought. The detonation happened at two thousand feet. Yeah, two thousand feet. Okay, good. I know there's a story uh, about what uh, the experience from uh, from Oppenheimer's point of view, and he said when when they saw that cloud, that some people cried and some people laughed, and he said, the famous quote from him was, "Now I am the destroyer of worlds." Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know the the strange part was, and I always heard this to be true, and Charlie can correct me if I'm wrong because he's the expert here. Uh, that um there were people who thought that it would either explode or the whole atmosphere would catch on fire and the world would be destroyed were yeah, they no, afraid that of that worried about. yeah huh they were worried about that yes yeah they were worried about that how worried were they because they went ahead and did it anyway <laughs> It was a matter of probability. I mean, you know, it's like it's like when they're saying at the great, uh, the new CERN uh, 
atom smasher in Switzerland, they, they were talking about how they were worried about creating a black hole that would suck up the whole Earth. Yeah. Well, yeah, that could happen, but it, the probability is low enough they went ahead and built it anyway, and it hadn't sucked up the Earth yet. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> <I'll pass that. laughs> because as a kid, I seem to vaguely remember getting up at like five o'clock in the morning to watch this explosion on television. Oh, really? Wow. I think they actually televised it. If I'm not mistaken, I seem to remember that vaguely as a child. I well, mean, they took a they took a photograph. They they they, they did a they, movie. They filmed it and all that stuff, but that was in the. I, did was they have alive. TVs and everything? That was 1944, I think, or 45. They didn't have TVs at anybody's house back then. I guess not. Maybe maybe I'm I'm mistaken. Yeah. I got up to see something at five o'clock in the morning. <laughs> maybe it was. Did they do other tests as well? Where they where they? You may be thinking about they 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 televised a bunch of. Uh, Hydrogen bomb tests back in the 50s. Hmm. Maybe that's what you're thinking of. Well, I can't remember any of them, so I'm sorry. Bikini so. Island. You know what the bikini bathing suit is named because of those atomic explosions. Right. The bikini was supposed right. to make men's mind blow up like an atomic bomb. I can, is uh, that where bomb. that comes from? That's where the bikini comes from. Really? The, 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 the name for the bikini. They didn't invent the bikini. No, no, that's where the name for the bikini came from. Yeah. 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 I always I always knew that. Yeah. You didn't know that, right? See, the kids don't know. These young no, moms, like Mandy don't know, know. You didn't know that either, Mar Marjorie? No, not at all. Yeah. yeah. Oh, bikini atoll was where they were doing most of yeah. the most of the hydrogen bomb explosions. Yep. Mm -hmm. Do we have hydrogen bombs anymore? Did we give up on that? Oh, we still have them, part of our nuclear arsenal. Yeah. 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 But, sure Russia uh, has a lot of them. Yeah. Yep. It's interesting, isn't it, that we are the only country that ever dropped an atom bomb on a living population. Yep. Uh, and um, it's never happened since. And how many years has it been? Been... 75 45. years since the first atom bomb exploded. About 77 years ago or so. Yeah, 75, 76, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And yet nobody else has blown one up since us. Not on people. Yeah. They've blown them up all over the place. Well, they test them. They yeah. test them. But I mean, we don't, uh, they've never dropped them on a, on a, nope. on a populated area. And uh, I think that speaks to the fact that Nobody, after seeing the horror of what it did, nobody yeah. wants to do it, you know. And not only that, but the cloud moves, you know, so it, it can affect your population, too. Yeah. Well, the other question I have for Charlie here is I've been led to believe that the atomic devices that Putin alludes to are not of the same nature as the one that leveled Hiroshima. That they're smaller, aren't they? Well, he's supposedly, yeah, they, they do have smaller, That'll you do. can have them any size. It depends on how much uranium or, or plutonium you use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. But, I mean, the ones he has aren't capable of decimating, say, half of the Ukraine. No. Not right. half of the Ukraine, but, I mean, they could still, you know, make a, a wide swath of land unlivable for thousands of years because of radioactive fall. Well, I think Putin has made a wide swath of yeah. territory unlivable just by being president of the of Russia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> a little, little joke I did with very bad timing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was, Alex. What? Bad time. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> the expert on comedy. <laughs> We've gotten to a point in our marriage where she doesn't know when I'm kidding anymore. <laughs> I'm more worried about Putin. He's talking about destroying this nuclear plant in Ukraine yeah. Yeah. that would do a lot more damage than any of his nuclear. Yes, weapons. yes, absolutely, absolutely. Come to the math side. What is the rest? Yes, we have pie. We have pie. <laughs> 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 I've never seen you wear the same t-shirt twice. 
Oh, they have so many of them. How many of them do you have? It's on t-shirts. How, how, much, how many do you have? I got about 80. Jesus. About 80? Yeah, at least 80. But you've been on my show more than 80 times, and I don't remember you wearing the same one twice. <laughs> That's because after about six months, you forget that I wore. I mean, look at my mind wear out. Look at that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't wear mine often enough to wear them out. Yeah. So far. And you get these all on Amazon, right? Uh, mostly. Mm -hmm. I've got a few of them just on, on uh, advertisements on Facebook. If it's oh, really? Oh, okay. Why, why don't you buy one on Facebook? You're getting advertisements right for everything. Yeah. Well, yes, you you don't have to do that. You can go look up something just on your iPhone or something, and it'll show up on your Facebook page. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I know they say you talk about something, and it'll pop up. And there have been two examples that I've had that I actually yeah. never Googled it yet, but I was talking about some one area near my work, this housing area, and all of a sudden, it popped up on my Facebook. Yeah. Really? Oh, look who's come in. Mm -hmm. He turns off his mic when she comes in. Uh, he's not taking any chances. <laughs> exactly. Kids say the darndest you know, things. <laughs> what's interesting is as you get older, I guess you don't have this need as much because we don't see the other kids. They never see <laughs> drop playing by. games for six hours so far yeah. and on her phone in her bed. Cat. How's, the cat, how's the cat doing, by the way? That's been fine. <laughs> <laughs> How's the kid doing? The kid's doing he's an indoor right. cat, so he's freaking out about all the squirrels running around. So he runs oh. in here and shoves his head in the blinds, and then the the squirrels was jumping on the tree, and then he runs through the other area, runs in the window. So crazy. Does he make the cat sound? The cats make when they see a squirrel, like tick, 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 tick. yeah. He there's a cat that like cruises back and forth to different houses, and when he sees that one, he freaks out. His tail gets all fluffy and everything. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I I had a uh, my ex girlfriend had a Siamese cat, and it we let it out in the backyard. Okay, and there was a squirrel out there, and it was always the same squirrel, mm -hmm. and they had this relationship with each other. It was amazing. I mean, he would chase the, the cat would chase the squirrel and the squirrel would let him chase. And then he'd run up a tree and drive the cat crazy. And then he'd come down and tease the cat a little bit and go back up in the tree where the cat couldn't get. You know, I mean, it, it was an amazing relationship between him and, and the Siamese never tried to kill the squirrel. Mm. And the squirrel kept intimidating the goddamn cat, you know. <laughs> They seem to have had a really good relationship with each other. You know. What's funny with all the videos you see now, sometimes you see these different kind of animals like, you know, sleeping next to each other and playing with each other. And it's just yeah. pretty funny. Well, they always like to let you think that the, the, uh, the real enemy of a cat is a dog. And you get a dog and you get a cat together, they become best friends. Yeah. They're fine. You know, They're fine. I've never seen a dog and a cat that didn't get along. And they sleep together. They sleep together, everything, you yeah. know, so anyway. And then we just picked up my son's first car. Oh, it's oh my God. You're, you're, yeah. It's all over now, Brian. I would have warned everybody, but you guys live far away, so. <laughs> <laughs> no. But we were smart. It's still under mommy's name, so it's. <laughs> what, what kind of car is it? It's a Toyota, a little small sports car, or Scion, I mean, Scion. It's a small mm -hmm. little sports car. Yeah. So. Yeah, so, but we need him to help with the kid, deal you know, with her, bringing her to school, and then bringing uh, the other one to high school, also the same high school he goes to uh, next year. So we said, we'll get you this. You can pay us back monthly with insurance and registration and get some responsibilities. Because he's, he's working at 31 Flavors, but, you know, his money goes as he plays more games. So we <laughs> stopped that pretty quick. You know, Adrian, uh, I think, part cat. Yeah. At any time she sees a camera, she poses. Oh. <laughs> yeah, smile. Show me your nice teeth. <laughs> she has a couple teeth in the front that we gotta fix. <laughs> Hopefully, those other ones will pop out and they'll be good. What do you mean you had to fix them? No, so, because they're small and they're like going in. Mm. So, well, I've had these crooked teeth all my life on the bottom. <laughs> 
the doc, dentists in those days said, wait a little while, they'll probably straighten out. Well, they yeah. never have. They didn't use braces way back then. No, they didn't. They really didn't. Um, but anyway. Uh, they didn't. Yeah. Well, anyway, we have uh, kind of run out of time here. Ooh. And it's been really nice. Just a nice light hour of fun and game. Talking about nuclear war. And yeah, talking yeah, about right. nuclear war. <laughs> Poison well, food. Well, I was just trying to get the straight scoop on nuclear devices from Charlie, who he, God knows he went to school for it, so we may as well get his money's worth here. <laughs> might as well. Because he ain't getting it from coaching baseball. No. <laughs> Softball. Anyway, Marjorie, thank you for being here. What's for dinner tonight? Same old, same old. What, what do you mean the same old, same old? <laughs> what? What? It's a surprise. It's a surprise. There you go. <laughs> well, she got an order, and I don't know what that order oh, was. Where'd you order? Something from the order. Where did you order from? I'm not telling you. Let me, <laughs> let me, let me guess. It was Stu Leonard's. <laughs> and you ordered lobster Sorry. rolls? No. <laughs> Sushi? Yes. Okay. Mm, nice. You have to eat the sushi the same day. Yes, it's so fresh. It's so it, fresh the first day. So yeah. yeah. If you wait a day, it's okay, but it's not, but you know. Tonight's perfect. Anyway, thank you, Marjorie, for being here. Charlene, always a pleasure having you here. Uh, Charlie, thank you for the science tu tutorial here on the program. Right. Uh, thanks to Len LaFrisco for being here. Uh, thanks to the lovely and attractive Mandy uh, O'Brien, who is... Uh, uh, I'm showing you down because I'm going to get a petty. I'm going to the beach this week, so... Right. Whoa. <laughs> Enjoy. You're getting a petty so you can go to the beach. What beach do you go to? Is it the, It's the Atlantic out there, right? Yes, but I'm going, well, the golf. The golf is also, you know, mm. but I'm going with the fitness studio people to Treasure Island, Florida. Oh, really? Mm. Oh, well, have a nice trip. It's supposedly Thanks. really hot down there and full of descent. It's going to be brutal. It's going to be the face mm. of the sun. Basically. Mm. A lot of mosquitoes. And a lot of yeah. DeSantis. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, thank you very much to uh, uh, Paula for joining us today. Always good to see you. And that new camera makes you look even lovelier than you are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Marjorie will call you and teach you how to on Zoom <laughs> and put on the glamour puss thing. Mm. Uh, hey, Scott Boddicker, always nice to see you. Always. Uh, and uh, Jeffrey Stein, thank you, Jeffrey. We appreciate it. And Brian Neary, uh, and of course, uh, what's her name again? <laughs> he had she. You had to tell him what your name was. Adrian, thank you, Adrian, for being with us today. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. What? What is she doing, boy? <laughs> But I never had a kid, but this is the next best thing. Anyway. I'll drop her off next week. Yeah, <laughs> please do. And then I'll, two days later, I'll be screaming, pick her up. Uh, uh, put everything behind you alphabetical. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and finally, here to close us off tonight, it's the lovely and attractive Ed Berger, <laughs> Edward Berger, who uh, signs us off by saying. That's all, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. See you later. Bye.